In the last four episodes, we have learned a lot about CSV file loading into Snowflake and how to handle different scenarios by using the file format and copy command properties. Now, we have a scenario where a first few CSV files uploaded successfully and the incremental CSV file is not conforming to the table structure and the column in the data files are more or less in count. And if those additional columns are not really required for your data processing pipeline and can be ignored, then how would you handle it? In another scenario, there is a data set having hundreds of fields, but we want to load first 10 or 12 columns into our Snowflake table. If that is the use case you are dealing with, then this video is for you. We will learn and see how to use one of the column count mismatch property in the file format object and handle such use cases and understand what are the different limitation with this property. We will practice the points listed below in the tree map using Snowflake free trial edition. How to handle column count mismatch while loading data and how this attribute works with other file format and copy properties attributes. There are a lot of exciting things to learn and this playlist will help you with that. So stick until the end of this video. You can access all the SQL script and data set used in this video from my website and link is given below in the description section. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this how to load CSV data into Snowflake playlist for true data professional like you. I am assuming that you already have SnowSQL CLI installed else you would not be able to practice them in your local environment. I am in my Snowflake SnowSite web UI and using the Snowflake free trial edition. So first we are going to create a table called column mismatch table. This table has total seven column. The first two columns are just to capture how the record looks like and actual data start from column one to column five. We are going to use copy command to load the data and the sample file has rows where the column count mismatch will appear. Let's review the sample file. So the row number 23 in the sample file is indicating the header. Row number 24 and 25 are the good record and if you see this description telling the good record so when we load the data we would be able to recognize these rows are good rows and I am going to run multiple cycles that's why I have given the file name. The third row is having less number of column it means that it will have a column count mismatch. The fourth row is also having a column count mismatch it has more than expected columns. Last row is having empty data set okay. So let's review the file in the editor and we will use SnowSQL CLI to put the data into the user stage. And if you have not seen how to use user stage or a table stages or how to load data using SnowSQL CLI or a web UI, you can watch my other videos or playlist to get a better understanding. The link is given here. Let's quickly review the put command before we really apply it. So put command takes the file from your local machine and it is going to use the user stage and the user stage is represented with this tilde sign auto compress equals to false and parallel value equals to one. So this is my sample file which has total six line items. One, the first row is header and rest of the five rows are data rows, okay? So before placing the file, let me check whether I have any data available in my user stage. So I am connected with my SnowSQL and let's first list whether we have any data set available in my user stage. So this is the command. I do not have any data set available. This is how my put command looks like. There is something wrong. My sample file is uploaded successfully. Let's go back to web UI and check it once again. So I have the sample underscore 01.csv and the size is 320. Good. Now before I run my copy command, I am going to create a file format. The name of the file format is standard CSV FF. The type is CSV, compression is none, field delimiter is comma, file optionally enclosed by is double quote, representing as 042, going to skip the header. So my file format is created successfully. Let's quickly review whether my table has any record or not. I do not have any data in my table. Now I am going to run this copy command which will 
insert the data into column mismatch table it is going to use this location where it will pick the file from it is using the file format standard csv ff and on error equals to abort statement so if there is any issue parsing the data as per file format definition this particular copy command will abort let's run that so it clearly says end of record reached while expected to parse column and column mismatch. And it is clearly saying line number four, character 42, row three, column mismatch. And it is also giving a suggestion that instead of using skip file, please use continue to load the data. And that's what we are going to do. Before I do that, let's check whether I have any data set available in my table or not. So no data is uploaded because I used abort statement. Now I have modified my copy statement on error attribute is taking a new value called continue instead of abort statement. Okay, let me run this copy command. Now here you can see very clearly it has parsed total five rows out of five rows only two rows are loaded and three errors are seen and we know what is the error. If you really want to skip some of this record which does not comply to your file format, you can use the continue. I can see all the good records are available. Now I am going to put another file which is called sample underscore 02 CSV and let's see how this record looks like. So this is my sample 02 CSV and the cycle run value is sample 02. I'm having the same data set except this value. Let me put the file in the user stage. So it got loaded successfully. I have two data set sample 01 and sample 02. Now let's go back to SnowSite web UI. Now I am going to use this attribute called error on column count mismatch. By default, the value of this attribute will be set to true. So if there is a column count mismatch, what is given in your table versus in the data file, and if this value is true, the execution will not happen. And if we say it's okay to have a column mismatch, I have to set this value equals to false. And once I set equals to false, let's see how does it behave. So I'm going to create a new file format called column mismatch CSV. All the values are same except line number 96, where column count mismatch is set to false. Okay, let me create that. So it is created successfully. I am loading the sample 02 into the same table and this time my on error is exactly same and the file format is referring to the new file format. Let's run this copy command. And if you see the magic, it has really loaded all the files, okay? And we did not find any error. See how the data looks like. From the first run, I only managed to get two records which were valid record. From the run two, I managed to get all the record even though there were less column and more column. So, so whenever there is a less column, the column which does not have a value in the data file comes as a null. And if there is a more column, all the columns in the data file which are not matching will be truncated or will not be considered for the loading. God, which is completely empty, is also got loaded. So, so this is how you can use this particular attribute and define true and false true will be the default value if you want to make sure that even though there is a column mismatch in your data file versus your table definition you can make this attribute equals to false there are cases where new columns are getting added into the source system and you don't want to have any impact on your data pipeline you can set this value equals to false for your file format make sure this is a file format attribute not the copy command attribute Many of us is having this assumption that Snowflake is a very, very expensive tool. However, that is not the true. If you have not followed the best practices, obviously Snowflake will end up incurring a lot of cost. Let's try to understand how our copy command is performing with respect to time. So if you look into the first copy command where everything failed, it took 4.8 second. On the second copy command, where on error equals to continue statement was there, it took 2.6 second. However, in the third copy command, where we have used column mismatched file format and about statement is there, it took 2.9 second. Since we have used handful of record, it is hard to validate whether these numbers are really looking good and any major difference is there or not. I am going to load 3 million record 
and let's see how that 3 million record works when error on column count mismatch is false. Now we are going to load around 3 million records into a table and see how the performance varies if we use error on column count mismatch attribute or not. So we are going to have three different scenarios. Scenario one, where we are going to load all 3 million record into a table without any issue. Scenario two, we will try to load the same 3 million rows into a table where there are column mismatch and, and scenario third, we will give error on column count mismatch flag equals to false and try to load the same data and try to observe because of this attribute or because of the extra processing, does warehouse spend more time loading the data or not? I am using three different warehouses to make sure that we do not take the advantage of caching while running the copy command. Let me switch my context. Let's remove if there are any files available under this location. Let's check whether user stage has any data set or not. I do not have any data set. Now I am going to run this put command through my SQL CLI. Let's see how my large data set looks like. So I have from 0, 01 to 0, 07 total 7 files and this is the size. They are all compressed with gzip. I am connected with my SQL. First I will change the virtual warehouse. I am going to use medium size virtual warehouse. This is my put command which will take all the customer file from this temp location and place the file inside this customer CSV 500k folder. And I am going to use parallel value equals to 50. This may take a while. So I am fast forwarding it. I can see all the seven files are loaded successfully. Looks good. Now I'm going to create a table called customer underscore three millions and it has all the 15 columns as per the data file. So my table is created successfully. Since it is a gzip file, I am creating a file format called customer underscore csv underscore gzip01. And it has no other attribute other than file type, compression, field delimiter, field optional enclosed by and skip header. So my file format is also created. Now I am going to run a copy command which will pick all the file from this 500k location, use this file format which is given here and on error it will continue and the pattern is CSV followed by gzip. So it took roughly 7.2 seconds to load the data, looks good. So total 2.170 million rows, good. Now I am going to use another virtual warehouse to simulate the scenario two. So my virtual warehouse is ready. I am going to create a table which has just a 12 column instead of 15 columns. So my table is created successfully. Now I am going to create another file format where error on column count mismatch is true. What does it mean that if column count mismatches, it will throw an error. So my file format is created. Let's see whether we have files available there or not. Yes, we have all the files available. Now it is copying into this table, which has less number of column from the same location and it will on error, it will continue. Since all the rows into the data file is having a 15 column, none of the record will be processed, but let's see what happens. So it took 4.2 second, good. And let's see whether we have any data set available or not. We do not have any error record because all the rows into the data file is having a 15 column and table is having a 12 column. So obviously it will not run. Now I'm going to use the third virtual warehouse. And here I'm going to create a CSV file, which is error on column mismatch equals to false in the sense even if there is a mismatch in the column count according to the table column count it will insert the record i'm going to use this file format in this case and let's run the same thing so 
no error here everything is loaded let's run this count so i have 2.17 million rows good let's go back to the query activity and see so these are my three different queries okay the first one where there was no issues and everything got recorded that column in data file as well as column in table matched perfectly fine the second where nothing got inserted and third where data got inserted however the column mismatch was there and with the flag we managed to insert the record and if you look into that since this inserted more data set it took little longer time this did not insert any data set that's why it did it took less time and this inserted less amount of data set and it took less time if you don't need to insert all the data set into your table and and some of the column can be skipped then you can use this attribute in your file format and save a lot of time as well as cost Good. so this is how you can simulate your scenarios and optimize your virtual warehouse compute consumption before we proceed further i would like to share something with you snowflake cloud data warehouse is the future it is such a powerful platform with great features that will eventually replace many legacy data platform believe it or not i have been adding many simple and real life scenario based videos and playlist so you all can learn you don't need to buy any expensive courses all my contents are freely available in this channel my channel audience are really enjoying them and your success and feedback really matters a lot so don't hesitate to share it let's move next so we have seen and learned a lot in this video about column mismatch property what we have not seen and going to learn in this playlist is what should we do with special characters while loading csv data set support for deduplication while loading small or large csv data set how to validate data after copy command execute the data load or even before running the copy command and many more interesting use cases there are many more scenarios to be seen and learned when it comes to snowflake and data loading into snowflake so keep following this playlist and thank you for watching happy learning